Good morning, everyone. It's good to see this morning, uh, Amy and Janet. And uh, let's see, we have Amy Kitzmiller and Janet and Susan and Stacy and Amy Sloan. Good to see you guys. Hope that y'all got a good night's sleep and hope that you're ready for the day. Not sure what it's like up in Oklahoma, but today it's kind of a rainy, kind of messy day. It would be a great day to stay home, but we're not doing it, right? We've got things to do. Good morning, Bobby. All right. We love you too. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And I'm sure that others will be popping on um, as we go. Um, we're going to start with day 71 in Lion Bites. And the title of this is Strength to Your Voice. You who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up. Do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. Isaiah 40 verse 9. I am releasing a new strength to your vocal cords. No longer will you regard your voice as weak and not worth being listened to because now you will have the ability and the opportunity to roar with justice over situations where you once would have watched in silence from the sidelines. I am increasing your capacity to hold a war cry over oppression until situations shift. I am calling you to raise a shout of renewal over places where the enemy has brought disgrace and ruin. Your tongue will carry my words with a new razor sharpness that cuts through any spiritual chains and fetters and sets captives free. As you follow me and begin to use your voice in new ways, you will discover that you have a new ability and opportunity to shout, to shout freedom over prisoners and captives who have until now only heard the belittling, enslaving words of the deceiver. Now I am going to use you to cut through all other noise and speak words of life. This new empowerment to your voice is by the Spirit of God, and you will find new freedom to your physical body too, as you get used to speaking with more volume and more words. Do not be silent, even when you're alone. Sing, shout, praise the Lord with all your newly strengthened vocal abilities. Get used to being a strong voice. And here's our decree. Make this declaration. I decree that I will not be silent anymore. I declare that I am a warrior with a strong voice. What I say is worth hearing because he, because of he who is in me and, and who has set me free to shout and sing and roar. Okay, so... Um, one thing I want to say about this, that as I was reading this, is this is kind of a, a social justice kind of message. And um, certainly there are situations that are that we are made aware of in the world that absolutely need our voice behind. And we need to be declaring things. But here's what I want to caution you, because when I was reading this, I just got this big caution sign that came up in my spirit. And what, what I heard, um, in, inside of my, um, my spirit was, um, or the way that I connect with the Lord is I heard this be, be very leery of what it is that you are h h hitching your wagon to. Because the world will tell us that there are certain topics that we need to put our voice behind. But the reality is, is the, the deceiver is so sneaky that sometimes the things that we need to be raising our voice about are not the things we're raising our voice about. And we have to be very cautious when it comes to social justice issues, because what I have found in some of my own research of some of these hot topics um, that are out there that are that are, you know, people are really just becoming very proud of the fact that they that they support and they follow and they do it financially. They do it with their time and their energy are not holy at all. In fact, you need to go back and look at founders of some of these movements and see what their roots are. 
And if their roots are in witchcraft, which I have found some to be, then you need to be very cautious of that. Because even though it may look like a really good cause, um, it's not necessarily. And there, and we see that by some of the fruit that's coming out of it. But I think some of what we need to put our voice to are things that are aligning with Scripture. And some of these um, groups out there, they're full of hate. That's not at all what Scripture tells us, right? We're to love. We are to love. And sometimes we think that by getting out and marching with our signs or by putting our money towards something that we're showing love, but we're not necessarily doing that. Sometimes we're just supporting the efforts of the enemy. So um, I think that we have to be very prayerful. I think we definitely have to, to have a strong voice, but it always needs to be a voice that's aligned with scripture. Because that's the only truth that we can hold fast to. That's that that has been tried and true all through, um, you know, thousands of years now. And so, um, so I, I just, you know, I think as people of God, you know, sometimes we just go, oh yeah, I'm going to get behind this effort and I'm going to support it 100%. It sounds so good. It sounds like the holy thing to do. And then, you know, over time you start to see, oh, maybe not, maybe I was being manipulated, um, maybe, maybe there were things that were going on behind the scenes. So that's where prayer comes in. When the Holy Spirit guides us and directs us, then we know what's going to be something that we need to open our mouth about. And I think, um, you know, just as we've talked about in days past, when we ask God's Holy Spirit to, to help us to loosen our tongues when it's time to speak and to stifle our tongues when it's not time to speak and to, to know the difference then um then we we are much much better off so i just want to say that because I, I see a lot of um colleagues and friends and all sorts of people that that they just they go oh yeah i'm supposed to you know be bold well yeah but be cautious about what you're being bold about because some of what's been happening has been very divisive and sometimes it's so subtle we don't even see what's going on so the Holy Spirit gives us discernment so we can see those things. O oh Lord, let our souls rise up to meet you just as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen and amen. All right, so we finished up um, Song of Songs the other day, and... I think we've got, um, you know, we're, we're in Leviticus right now. And so I'm going to keep that as our Old Testament passage. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip now um, to the back of the Bible, not to Revelation, but to the, the little Johns. I love the little Johns. First, second, uh, third John. Um, I love these. And so I just want us to um, kind of go over. I think they're very uplifting. And um, so we're going to start in 1 John 1, chapter 1 today. We proclaim to you the one who existed from the beginning, whom we have heard and seen. We saw him with our own eyes and touched him with our own hands. He is the word of life. This one who is life itself was revealed to us and we have seen him. And now we testify and proclaim to you that he is the one who is eternal life. He was with the Father, and he was revealed to us. We proclaim to you what we ourselves have actually seen and heard, so that you may have fellowship with us, and our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that you may fully share our joy. This is the message we heard from Jesus, and now declare to you. Actually, I went too far. Sorry. I somehow I'm I missed my little my little tags. Okay. So, we've got this introduction into um 1 John and <clears throat> excuse me, this is written by the apostle John and it's written somewhere between AD 85 and 90 and it's a letter written uh while he was in Ephesus 
Um, there is a good chance that he was the only surviving um, apostle at that time. Um, he had not yet been banished to the island of Patmos. Um, and so here he is writing this apostle, uh, I mean, this uh, letter of, of love. So we see this introduction into the light. And um, I think this is really beautiful. We, we talked a little bit about light. We've been talking about light in the sermon series that has been going on now for three weeks. And um, we've been talking about that, that darkness that is sometimes inside of us, that darkness that is out there in the world and how the light comes in and absolutely pushes the darkness out. Um, it just, the darkness does not stand a chance when there is the light. And of course we know that the light is Christ and Christ is the word. So I think what I want to say this morning is, um, because it mentioned he is the word of life. Um, the one who is life, who this one who is life itself was revealed to us and we have seen him. And now we testify and proclaim to you that he is the one who is eternal life. Now, we often think about life after, you know, we pass away. We think about life eternal as being that, but eternity starts right now. I mean, we're living in that eternal life in the sense that he is with us. He has guided us through this life. This is our, uh, our opportunity to learn how to love, to love him so completely and to love others so completely. Um, and the way that we do that is that we take his word to heart. And, um, and we recognize it as being him. I mean, I, I was listening to a conversation the other day about the father, the son, the Holy spirit, and the way some of scripture is worded. And, um, and, and w what kept coming to my mind, I kept my mouth shut, um, because it was just a conversation between people, a theological conversation. But what I kept my mouth shut about was the fact that, you know, we can't necessarily explain. I mean, God is too complex for us, yet we spend a lot of energy just trying to explain things rather than just obeying him. And part of what the message I think for us today is, is that just like we're doing today, we get into the word and he begins to change our heart. That light is, it, it begins to shine in our hearts and any kind of darkness that we have flees. Um, so that changes how we live our life. It changes our attitude about life. It changes how we love others and how we love God, how we respond to God. And we respond to God with obedience. All right. So let's turn over to Leviticus. And we are in chapter seven, the last part of chapter seven, starting in verse 28. Then the Lord said to Moses, give the following instructions to the people of Israel. When you present a peace offering to the Lord, bring part of it as a gift to the Lord. Present it to the Lord with your own hands as a special gift to the Lord. Bring the fat of the animal together with the breast and lift up the breast as a special offering to the Lord. Then the priest will burn the fat on the altar, but the breast will belong to Aaron and his descendants. Give the right thigh of your peace offering to the priest as a gift. The right thigh must always be given to the priest who offers the blood and the fat of the peace offering. For I have reserved the breast of the, as, of the special offering and the right thigh of the sacred offering for the priests. It is the permanent right of Aaron and his descendants to share in the peace offerings brought by the people of Israel. This is their rightful share. The special gifts presented to the Lord have been reserved for Aaron and his descendants from the time they were set apart to serve the Lord as priests. On that day they were anointed. The Lord commanded the Israelites to give these portions to the priests as their permanent share from generation to generation. 
These are the instructions for the burnt offering, the grain offering, the sin offering, and the guilt offering, as well as the ordination offering and the peace offering. The Lord gave these instructions to Moses on Mount Sinai when he commanded the Israelites to present their offerings to the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai. So we see here, um, we, we talked the other day um, for about, about um, the, um, the fat being the choice part of the um, sacrifice and how all of that was dedicated to the Lord. And then we talked about how no, none of the blood was to be consumed by humans because blood represents life and life comes from God alone. And, um, and is is, I mean, that's up to God. And so it, it's a symbol of that. And so humans did not consume that. Um, but here we see some very specific instructions. People were to bring their personal offerings and then part of that personal offering was set apart, the breast and the right thigh was set apart so that it would feed the priests. And this was a um, a way of taking care of the ones who were called specifically, you know, to be the ones trying to spiritually take care of other people, to present them before the Lord and all of those things. You know, um, today we don't exactly do this, uh, sort of thing, like, like bringing an animal and, and feeding, um, the pastors and all of that, that way, but we bring our personal offering. We get, we bring the resources that we have. We live in a much different society than we used to. So most of us don't have fatted calves to bring or, uh, you know, the, the choice uh, lamb or goat or whatever it is that we're bringing before the Lord. We just don't have those things, but we do have money. We do have resources like that. We have, um, ways that we provide. And I know I hear people sometimes say, well, you know, you don't have to give money to the church. You you can give your time or whatever. We're supposed to give it all, to be real honest. That's what tithes and offerings is all about. Our tithes are the resources and they're there to uh, take care of the, the physical church, to take care of the staff, to take care of those who are, who are working hard to take care of, of the flock. Um, but then uh, we have our offerings, which are those gifts and those talents and those things that we do above that, that really just bring us joy. Um, they, you know, we pastors do that in a lot of different ways. And, um, and so, and, and you guys do that in, in a lot of different ways. You guys serve so faithfully in the, in eldership and in all sorts of ways. So, you know, I, I, we do these same sorts of practices. You know, when we read Leviticus, sometimes we want, we're tempted because it's not the most exciting read We're we're tempted to say, you know, I don't want to read that book because it really doesn't pertain to me, but it does. It's just that the offering looks a little bit different, but the spirit of how we give the offering should be the same. We give this because this is what God's called us to do. So we give this as a part of our worship. I um I know that I could I could um submit my offering online and it would save me the cost of checks and writing out the checks and all that. I could just set it and it would go and I wouldn't even have to think about it. But I choose not to do that. I choose to put a check physically in the offering plate every week because when I do it, it's a holy moment for me. It's like it's it's just like me bringing my cow, my calf, my sheep, my goat, whatever it is, bringing it to the Lord and just placing it there in the offering plate. And so I, I very much take that as an act of worship. Um, and so perhaps you have grown to, to do that very same thing. All right, now let's turn over to Luke, Luke chapter seven, starting in verse one. When Jesus had finished saying all this to the people, he returned to Capernaum. At that time, the highly valued slave of a Roman officer was sick and near death. 
when the officer heard about Jesus, he sent some respected Jewish elders to ask him to come and heal his slave. So they earnestly begged Jesus to help the man. If anyone deserves your help, he does, they said, for he loves the Jewish people and even built a synagogue for us. So Jesus went with them. But just before they arrived at the house, the officers sent some friends to say, Lord, don't trouble yourself by coming to my home, for I am not worthy of such an honor. I am not even worthy to come and meet you. Just say the word from where you are and my servant will be healed. I know this because I am under the authority of my superior officers and I have authority over my soldiers. I only need to say go and they go or come and they come. And if I say to my slaves, do this, they do it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed. Turning to the crowd that was following him, he said, I tell you, I haven't seen faith like this in all of Israel. And when the officer's friends returned to his house, they found the slave completely healed. Now, this is a beautiful story. This this man is a very humble man. Um, he's a very faithful man. He is a Gentile. He is not a Jewish person up to this point. We have seen Jesus uh, ministering to or healing the Jews. But this is the first account where he's healing a Gentile. And I love the spirit of this man. As I was reading it, I thought, you know, when we start looking at who who we might like to best be like in scripture, you know, this man's going to be at the top of my list because he is so humble and he has this faith and he's like, just say it and it'll be done. And, um, you know, if, if I'm if I'm truthful about that, I have really struggled with that over my life. Um, just that the whole um, concept of of being healed. Um, and I think it's because in my life, I've had a lot of people that have really put that down. And so it forms, whether you want it to or not, it forms these these um, attitudes about things. But healing does take place. Teresa is on here this morning, and she witnessed that firsthand in, among a group of ministers praying for another minister. And um, he was in very bad shape, but he he was healed. And um, she's been posting that on her Facebook. And I have I have just you know I'm just praising the Lord for that. I thank God for that. Um, that there is true healing, and we just we just believe in it. Now, sometimes healing doesn't happen the way we want it to, right? I've said that many, many times, that sometimes healing happens um, through death, and it's the ultimate healing. But um, I do believe that healing can happen because I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen here in Teresa's case. Teresa is one of my very best friends, and I, I know that she's truthful about what she puts on there and what, what she sees. And 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 it excites me when I see her uh, talking about um, this healing that took place. Yes. Okay, Teresa, thank you for that. Miracle documented by MRI. I mean, people are healed and it's amazing. And it just takes this faith. And, um, and I know all of those pastors that were praying for him, you know, that, that, that they were, they were just anticipating this healing. And so I, you know, I, we all have growth areas and this is one of my growth areas. I, I want to, 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 uh, be that, that confident in my faith that I can just say, Jesus, just say it. And it's done because, um, because, uh, you know, that you can say anything and do it. You, you spoke everything into existence. Why not, you know, do this? Um, so I guess where I've struggled is just, is this God's will and will I be disappointed? And that's all about me. But this man was humble. He was just humble and he was okay with, with, um, what was happening. He, he knew, um, that it was that, you know, if it's Jesus will, then, and that's what Jesus wants, then it'll happen. All right. So let's, uh, go on to our prayer time. And, um, this morning we have got some prayers for sure. Um, the first prayer, um, is for Leanne, uh, one of our church members, and she ended up having to go into the hospital yesterday. They finally got her into a room, um, late, yesterday uh, evening. So we want to pray for her. She's just really been um, having some strength issues, uh, some mobility issues. 
Um, she passed out yesterday. So they're trying to figure out what's going on with her. So we want to pray for Leanne. We also want to pray for Carl Ammond. Um, he fell off a ladder on um, Saturday, Friday, so one, one day last week. Um, the days have all mixed together. Um, but uh, he is uh, in, I think they were going to move him from ICU possibly. I need to check on that. Um, but he was up at least sitting in a chair yesterday. But he's had a lot of injuries. Nine out of 12 ribs were broken on uh, one side and they've displaced. So they've been trying to keep it from puncturing his lung. And um, they did have to put a chest tube in. So let's definitely keep Carl in our prayers. Um, also, uh, we want to pray for uh, Victoria Faust. She will be having surgery later this week. So we're praying for her to stay healthy enough so she can have that uh, surgery. And um, we continue to pray for the Stokes family. Um, as they grieve and um, for First Christian Church more as they grieve the loss of Jack. Um, we continue to pray for Donna Roth and the McLand family, all who have lost uh, babies or children, maybe adult children, but um, uh, the Roth family lost an adult daughter. The McLean family lost a baby. We continue to pray for Amy Novacek and we pray for Addie Ricketts. Rosie Green, all uh, with health issues. And um, we continue to pray for those who are searching for jobs, um, who have lost jobs recently, those who have been looking for quite a while, and um, those who are just struggling in life. This time of year, it's hard for folks. So we want to just, we want to pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you this day for your love, for your presence with us. We thank you for these little messages to think about. Areas that maybe we're not so faithful in, or maybe we have, um, we struggle. But we pray, Lord, that you will strengthen our faith, that you will strengthen our commitment to you, strengthen our commitment and responsibility within the church. We pray, Lord, for those who are struggling today, those that we have named by name and those that we have not. We pray, Lord, that you will touch each body that is weak, each body that needs healing. We pray, Lord, that you will strengthen minds and um, emotions and spirits. We pray, Lord, that you will be with people in the various challenges that they have, whether it be that they're in the midst of finding a job or whether it's in the midst of of um, paying bills as they get further and further in debt with the economy the way it is. We pray, Lord, for our national and local level leaders. We ask, Lord, that they will be uh, mindful of, of the group as a whole and not just mindful of their own needs. I pray, Lord, that anybody who is being, who is, who is um, trying to deceive us, Lord, that they be, that that light um, of Christ be sh shown upon them so that they can see the errors of their ways and repent. I pray, Lord, that you will help us all to focus upon you and how we can be of help in this world today. Each and every one of us are given a certain number of hours in which to make a difference. And we only have today, today. And so, Father, I pray that that we will be able to make a difference on just even one life today. It may be in a small way, it may be in a larger way, but Lord, help us to be a light in this dark world. Hear us now, O Lord, as we pray together the prayer Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that you do not claim to be God over just some people, but you are the creator and redeemer of all creatures. Help us to spread the good news that no one can claim ownership of you because each of us belongs to you.
Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ go with you wherever he may lead you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storms. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he will show you. May he bring you home rejoicing right back here in the morning. Until then, everyone have a great Tuesday and I'll look forward to seeing you in the morning. Take care.